James Hibbard with Entertainment Weekly. I'm here with the showrunners and a portion of the very large uh, Game of Thrones cast uh, here at Comic-Con at our hideout. Uh, so, um, we're going to Spain for uh, season five. We are. We are. So what does uh, Spain provide in terms of the show? What, do, what does that bring to new to the show? Brings tapas to the show. Tapas, yeah, that's good. <laughs> Brings lovely red wines to the show. Right, right. It's got a lot to offer. Yeah. And so that's going to be Dorn for, for, the, for the book readers. It's uh, the place where uh, Prince Oberyn was from that we've sort of heard about for a while, but haven't actually, <laughs> Prince Oberyn himself, uh, but we haven't actually seen. So, so it's presumably it's a very uh, lively culture, I'd imagine. Yes. Well, Dorn yeah. is uh, as far south as south goes. So yeah. it's, a, it's a whole new landscape, a whole new uh, cultural group. And uh, you get to meet Oberyn's daughters, three daughters with three different women, because he was a bit of a scoundrel, right. and, and uh, we're looking forward to it. It's when the last, you know, the world, uh, is probably the last season where the world continues to expand before we pass the halfway point and everything starts to contract and, and go to shit. And go to <laughs> shit. Yeah. Pretty much go to shit. Unlike yeah. the yeah. first yeah. one. Yeah, the yeah. sort of happy yeah. show that we've had the first uh, four seasons. Uh, and uh, we can't talk about Dorn without talking about your character, uh, you know, were, were you surprised at how heartbroken and upset people were by, by that episode? Um, I think I was really pleased, <laughs> um, more than surprised. Yeah. I was pretty heartbroken um, yeah. just reading the story uh, from an objective point of view. So it was um, the goal to break everyone's hearts or at least shock them, piss them off. Um, and, and hopefully that happened. Right? Yeah. yeah. That were they good. upset? They enjoyed it. Yeah. They liked they, they, they like made many mocks of my head and crushed them like over and over with tubes of blood and stuff like that. Yeah. He it kept on repeating watching. it. Repeating yeah. it. Yeah. Do you see that YouTube video <laughs> where, where everyone's watching at a bar? Like the yeah. People are watching no. at a bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a moment when the fingers go into yeah. uh, Pedro's skull. You, you, know, you know, it was a scream that got me. Really I actually. Yes. I remember there was this one guy who had yeah. a, a face of grief on. He was just like, yeah. he, had like <laughs> he had this like thick beard and glasses, and he was just, and everyone was like, eh, bro, and he was like this. <laughs> no. Cool. That was very moving. Mm. Yeah. Hear about that? No. Our casting director's son was really taken with Oberyn and started composing songs for him on his acoustic oh, guitar. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, yeah, oh, so we'll oh, cool. and uh, when you had an amazing, amazing fight scene, uh, yeah. you, you know, can, can you sort of like very briefly sort of tell what was like that was like to shoot? Uh, I I think he got off lightly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah that, that, was, that, that was very brief. You, you, you managed to hit the brief part at least. Yeah. Let's see. So, so do you think that's going to be the pinnacle of of your fight scene career, or do you think there's a chance of any other scenes of you wielding a sword or sword-like weapon in the near future? I think it's probably over now. Yeah. And okay. I think Brienne of Tarth does a lot of needlework now, and it's like quite a quiet life. Right. And uh, and Nikolai, you know, I, as, as a reader of the books, I'm not entirely sure of 